Today we're going to make the Harlequin pouch with 115% uh, size and a slip pocket on the inside and with a crossbody strap. The pattern designer's name is Crafted by Leanne. I'm going to add the link to this pattern down in the description. This is a free pattern and a lot of people have made this pouch already. Like there are several videos, instructions, and the pattern designer has a Facebook group where tons of people have added their versions of this beautiful, beautiful little pouch. When I was looking at other creators that have made this pouch, I found a creator that she mentions that she made the pattern bigger. Um, she increased the pattern in her, you know, PDF printer um, by 125%. And I tried doing that, but 125% was a little too much for my printer and I just could not figure out how to print it at that size. So what I ended up doing was I increased the pattern to 115%, 115. And this is the result. This nice Harlequin pouch. The finished size is 11 and three quarters by seven inches. So 11 and three quarters wide by seven inches tall, or, you know, the height. And I added again, two tabs on the side, a couple of D rings and a crossbody strap. And it is actually really, really cute. I really like how it turned out. I like this size with the bigger pouch. You can, you know, put other essentials in there, like some makeup, etc. So I think this size is, is also a very good size. I don't know if I will like it bigger than this. Okay, so here are the pattern pieces. Here's the outer, upper, and left sides. And this I'm going to, for this, I'm going to use this beautiful quilting cotton and it is interfaced. So it has woven interfacing here. And as you can see, I traced my pattern on these plastic sheets that you find at the dollar store. And I decided to do the template because I am going to make several of these bags. I like it that much. So here are four sides of the upper, front and back, and did the same, traced it on the plastic sheet, the bottom part of it. And I, for this, I'm going to use this vinyl, this faux leather. It's really soft. It's, um, it has a knitted backing. I purchased this uh, about three or four years ago at Joanne, and I don't think they have it anymore, which is a shame because I really like it. But that's what we're going to use for the bottom. I'm going to use my quilting cotton for the tabs on the side. For the interior, for the lining, I'm using waterproof canvas. And so of course, because of the waterproof canvas, you don't have to use woven interfacing, but you will cut two of these. If you are using any other material like quilting cotton or home decor fabric for your lining, you need woven interfacing and you need to interface them. But that's not the case for me. So I have two of these, but she does say to use fusible fleece. And so I cut two pieces of fusible fleece and I attach them to the back of my waterproof canvas here. However, because of the waterproof canvas, you really cannot fuse this because of the PVC coating. So what I had to do was glue them in place. I took some fabric glue and I cut my fusible fleece and I just glue them together, wrong sides together, you know, the fusible side and the backing. And I waited about 30 minutes and now look, it's stuck. It, it won't come off. I mean, if I pull it, it will, but I'm not gonna pull it, right? I'm just gonna, but it is going to work. <laughs> so that's what I did for that. 
and my slip pocket. This one is 12 and three quarters by four and a half inches. I am going, I only cut one piece, one rectangle, uh, because I am going to just pick one side, whichever side, and I'm going to fold it by a quarter inch and then fold it again, and that's going to create my hem. If I was using any other fabric that could fray, I would cut two pieces, join them right sides together, stitch them along the top side by about three eighths of an inch seam allowance or maybe half an inch seam allowance, fold them so that the wrong sides are now together and top stitch them. And then you will have your slip pocket. But I decided this is good because it's waterproof canvas. It's not going to fray and it's pretty thick. So I think this will work. For my zipper, my zipper for the bigger bag is 10 inches long and I'm going to use some of the scrap fabric from my vinyl as my zipper ends. And these are two inches by one and a half. So that will work perfectly. Okay, these are all the materials. Let me get my D-rings and let's get started. So you're going to go ahead and join the top and bottom panels uh, for the front and back of the pouch. You're going to stitch those in place together at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and stitch all of these together. You're going to have at the end four half panels, okay, with your upper and lower parts. Then you're going to open the seam and top stitch it in place. Make sure that you do this on all four of these panels. You're going to top stitch the top and the bottom. So you're going to have your right and left pieces. Then you're going to take those right and left pieces and join them together. Now make sure that your seam matches. So that center seam that creates the V shape matches down the center. And then go ahead and stitch it using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Do that for all four, right? So you're going to have two main panels when you're done. And once you have those two main panels, you again are going to open the seam and top stitch it uh, on both sides of the, seam, of the seam. And so you'll have that stitch line down the center, two stitch lines down the center, sorry. <laughs> Now you're gonna take your pocket, the slip pocket, and remember we folded the top edge. Now we're just stitching that top edge in place and you're going to do two stitch lines, one right on the top, about one eighth of an inch from the edge, and then the other one at the bottom. Take one lining piece, whichever you want, and put your slip pocket on top of the front of that lining piece. Okay, because we're going to stitch the front pocket in place. So you're going to start by stitching the bottom of the pocket and the sides. So stitch only on the sides, do not stitch on the corners and stitch the bottom. And I use through uh, a quarter inch, one eighth of an inch, quarter inch seam allowance, under three eighths of an inch, because 
you you don't need this to show on your seam. So after you stitch the bottom, then go ahead and stitch on the side. So I'm stitching it so the pocket is against the bed of the sewing machine because I want to be able to see the actual lining and make sure that I don't that I actually that I stitch on the actual lining. Okay? So right there. This bag is not very tall, so my cell phone is going to go laying down on the pouch, okay? It's not gonna be able to stand up. I don't want, I wanna make sure I have enough of the seam allowance, but I don't want my phone to kinda slide in the pocket. So I measure four inches from the side, and I'm going to do a quick stitch line down that measurement, those four inches. That will give me enough room for my phone and maybe the small pocket for my keys. And that's it. So four inches on one side approximately from the edge and don't stitch all the way to the top, just stop when you see the stitch line of your slip pocket. And now you see my phone will fit perfectly there. Go ahead and continue making your pouch by following the pattern instructions. We're going to do the strap connectors a little bit different for this bag. I'm going to attach them to the back of the pouch. For that you need two pieces of your quilting cotton, which is already interfaced, and they have to be three inches long by two inches wide, so a little rectangle. You're going to then fold along the two inch sides, you're gonna fold in towards the wrong side by a quarter inch and a quarter inch on both sides, and then along the three inch side, you're going to take your raw edge and fold it towards the center of the rectangle like this. So the raw edges are meeting together and the raw edges for on the sides are folded. So your final size for your little tab is two and a half inches by one. Take your D-ring and you're going to slide it inside your tab so that you see the bottom of the D-ring is against the wrong side of your tab. Then you're going to pick whichever side you want of the one inch side and you're going to fold it again. So you're going to fold it, this is about three eighths of an inch or half an inch almost, okay? And then you're going to take the other side, the other one inch side, and you're going to fold it again so it touches the other side of the tab. So you're closing the tab and kind of getting a little um, square here, okay? So on the back you see you have the two edges, the two folded edges meeting, and then here on the front is smooth. But once you do that, and, and you're going to press this with your irons, that way, as you can see, it doesn't fold open when you're managing the, fa the, the fabric. Then you're going to take some double-sided tape, like this, and I cut a little inch, a little piece, about an inch, and I put it right there at the bottom of my tab here along the one side, the one, along the one inch side, and then peel it off on both of them. Make sure your D-ring is inside the tab when you do this. And now when you fold it, it's going to stick together, okay? It's going to stick to that fabric right there.
That way it kind of stays in place until it, you're ready to stitch it to the back. So I'm just going to put a wonder clip here. To join it to the back of the pouch, you are going to measure from that seam down the center three inches. Okay, and half an inch down from the zipper line. So I already kind of put this one here, so it's about half an inch down and three inches, just like that. And I'm just going to take my um, marking pen and just mark a little two lines in there. Okay, so the two little lines are there marking my corner where I'm going to place my tab. And I'm going to take again more double sided tape and again just probably like about an inch of that on each side here. Okay, there. And you're going to place your tab face down, you know, with the raw edges face down, and you're going to match the one edge of your tab along that line where you mark the three inches and the top edge of your tab along the top line where you mark the half an inch. And there it is. Make sure that it's even, that it looks, yeah, it looks even right there, right there, perfect, and right here, perfect. So now, you see I can move it around and it won't fall until I take it to the sewing machine and stitch it in place. So I'm going to stitch it along the uh, like, a, like a square making sure you don't hit the D ring you can do a square and then like a X down the center make sure you do that before you join the lining before you close up the bag so before make sure you do that before you close up this pouch okay so you're going to do that only on one side of your exterior panel. Here's the, the lining, and I'm not attaching the tabs to the lining, only to the exterior panel. Consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you have learned something today. And here are my two uh, strap connectors stitched in place. Before joining or closing up the pouch, I noticed I have a lot of fabric uh, left over from the uh, pocket, the slip pocket that we made. So I'm just going to trim that off so that it matches the lining. As well as the corners here. And our final step is the strap. The strap, there are two pieces. You have the long piece, which is about 58, 59 inches long, and it's four inches wide. And then I folded the fabric in half and again. So the final measurement is one inch wide by 58 or 59 inches long. 
Then I have another little piece, which I did the same thing. I folded the piece, the strip of fabric to make it one inch wide. And I also folded the shorter edge edges, the four inch edges. The final size for this is one inch by seven inches long. I have a slider, the two swivel hooks, and a D-ring. So we're going to make it a little bit different this time. You're going to make your strap the same way that you make a adjustable crossbody strap. But what we're going to do is that we're gonna take this little part here and we're going to insert it in the D-ring and we are going to also insert a swivel hook. And we're going to open the row edges here, all of it, like this, and stitch them in place together. like this and you're going to stitch it in place together at half an inch seam allowance after that is done you're going to trim it and then open the seam close it all together and then stitch it in place on both sides so that it is closed like this one And this is how it looks when it's all done. You're gonna stitch it on both sides and you have your D-ring on one side and your swivel hook on the other side. And now you're going to make your crossbody adjustable strap the same way you make any of your straps. So here's the final pouch with the 115% uh, pattern size, the two tabs here on the back for the crossbody strap, slip pocket inside, the tabs, and the crossbody strap. If you want more information on how to make an adjustable and removable crossbody strap, I have a video here that you can watch. Okay, see you in the next video. Ciao.